Hi, my name is Jez and welcome to the third lesson in this series on how to build your own text adventure game in Python. Let me just share my screen for a second. Okay, so just to recap on where we are at the minute, if you recall, we're building a basic framework for our game that generates uh, a location and then presents the user with two options, the left path and the right path. It's a 50-50 chance on how um, the user navigates through, whether they navigate safely to the next location or they choose the unsafe path. And you can tweak those odds and you can start playing around with the numbers. So there's a greater chance of them um, taking the unsafe path rather than the safe path. It just makes the game a bit more interesting once you start tweaking the odds. And we'll look at those um, techniques later on. <clears throat> so if I was to run what we've already produced in the previous lessons, you will see that we have uh, a menu selection of what character we want. And depending on the character we select, it'll, it'll dictate uh, how many health points we start with. Okay, so for, in this case, I'm going to go with the wizard. Okay, and it gives me my first location. Not very exciting, but if you recall, we just want something working. Um, and then once we're happy that everything's um, functioning as it should, we can start fleshing it out and bringing in more detail to the game. So it looks like I'm in a street. Uh, there are two paths, left and right. So I take the left and I've chosen the unsafe path. And then it gives me, it deals me another location. So in this lesson, we're gonna be looking at what happens when the user takes the unsafe path. Well, I'll tell you now what's going to happen. We're going to meet uh, a random opponent and we're going to fight that opponent. But how do we fight an opponent in a text-based game like the one we're making? Well, we'll cover that shortly. First of all, let's pick our opponent, okay? And we're going to do it in exactly the same way as we did when we chose our location. So we had our list of possible locations all saved within a single variable called location. So if you locate the part where it informs the user that they've chosen the unsafe path, if you're following it in the same way um, as I'm writing it on screen now, it'll be at the very bottom. Okay, so we're just adding to this section within the else here. So here we can create our uh, list variable called enemies, okay? And if you remember, all lists start with square brackets. Within those square brackets, we add the items in our list. In this case, it's types of opponents. So we could have ogre, uh, uh, let's go for um, ogre, uh, oh, crikey, again, trying to think on the spot, should have come prepared. Uh, let's go with go uh, goblin as one, another and we'll go for a, a I don't know, um, uh, elf. Okay, so we've got our list of possible enemies all stored within a single variable called, well, enemies, okay, because we always like to name our variables sensibly, okay. So a variable that's designed to store a list of enemies, well, we're going to call it enemies. And we're going to choose one, one of those. So I'm going to uh, create my variable called enemy choice. Okay. And if you recall, we choose, we can choose uh, a single item randomly from a list using random dot choice. Okay. And within the brackets that follow, we, we specify from what list, because we've got a couple of lists now. We've got a list of locations and a list of enemies, and it will say, well, I can choose a random item, but can you let me know what list to use? So we're gonna tell it to use the um, enemies list, like so, okay? So it picks a random, <coughs> random, um, it picks a random enemy and we can then print it out and inform the user um, what their choice, what the choice is, or the choice was. So we're going to print uh, 
you are to fight uh, and okay and the plus is is the join so the plus is like the glue it's going to glue different elements together to make a complete sentence in this case it's going to take the words you are to fight and then bolts onto the end the enemy choice okay enemy choice i've just noticed i've got a spelling mistake here there we go okay now i've also noticed that if we choose a goblin it will say you are to fight an goblin so it doesn't read very well so i'm just going to put cheat a bit and amend my goblin to old goblin so it'll read you are to fight an old goblin so it just reads a little bit bit better okay so let's run this and see what we get let's try and trigger try and trigger the old say old path just bear with me a second there we go let's try and trigger the unsafe path so i'm going to play as the wizard again i'm going to take a left taking the safe path the unsafe path you are to fight an elf okay so we've got our we've got our opponents being selected okay now we have health points and we start the game with a set number of health points if i was the knight i start off with 100 if i was the wizard i start off with 80 and finally the robot i start with 60. in order for us to battle we need to know the enemy's health as well okay so we're going to create yet another variable called enemy health and we're just gonna at the minute we're just going to give it a, a starting value of 50. now when we battle we battle to the death so we keep fighting and keep battling until one of us dies until one of our till the health value of one of either myself or the player or the enemy reaches zero okay so it's almost as if we need to build a loop to keep repeating the fighting over and over again until one of us dies and we do that using a while okay so while while a certain scenario is happening then repeat this code when it's not when this scenario isn't happening or it isn't occurring then carry on reading the code below so while uh let's have a look while player health uh, is greater than zero and enemy health is greater than zero okay colon we always finish a while line off with a colon press return and you'll notice it's starting to indent so we know that any of the any indented code that follow on these lines or below belong to this while loop will repeat providing that the player health and enemy health are above zero as soon as one of us dips below zero or hits hits zero exactly then this this loop will break it, we won't be fighting anymore and then <laughs> it'll be it'll be um it'll be game over for one of us so how do we fight in a text-based game like this well the way i'm going to do it is imagine we're rolling dice okay i have a dice and the enemy has a dice and we both roll whoever gets the highest out of that roll wins that round so if I rolled a five and my elf enemy rolled a two, then I would win because I rolled the highest. I then take that five and I minus that five off the elf's health. And then we roll again. Okay, so, so you're beginning to see how the mechanics of these battles are, 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 are sort of forming. In order, in order for us to roll the dice, we're going to need yet more variables to record my role, the player's role, and the enemy's role. So let's set up, <clears throat> let's set up our, our variables that record the dice rolls. So I'm going to say player roll, okay, equals random dot rand int, a number between, let's go with one and, uh, if we go between one and six, then we're starting off in, with health in the high numbers by taking, even if we rolled six consistently, the battle, the battle will take forever. <laughs> it will just take forever as we're minus and six off each time. So let's increase the odds between one and, I'm gonna say 20. Pick a number between one and 20. Imagine a, um, <laughs> we're picking um, 
uh, a number between one and 20 each time. We'll do the same with enemy, enemy roll. Okay, exactly the same way of generating that number, random.randint between one and 20. And we may, it may turn out after we've tested this a few times that we might need to tweak these numbers slightly just to make it a bit more um, playable because we don't want the fights going on forever and ever and it'll get boring, but we don't want the fights being over just like that. It's all about trying to find that sweet spot you know, something that's enjoyable, but doesn't drag on for too long. So we might need to come back to these figures and tweak them slightly. So we both roll. We now need to decide who has won what, okay? And we do that simply using if statements. Okay, so we're saying if uh, player roll is greater than enemy roll, colon, because we always finish an if line off with a colon. Okay, so we're gonna do the winning scenario. If our role is greater than the enemy's role, we've won that round, okay? So let's confirm to the player that we've won that round, okay? Uh, you have um, won the round, okay? You can flesh this out. You can add descriptions like you you doubt a, uh, a fatal blow or something like that. You know, really develop, get creative with the words and the and the notifications that get fed back to the player. But for the time being, we're going to keep it nice and simple. You have won the round. Simple as. OK, so what's going to happen when we win? Well, we need to update the enemy role, don't we? OK, not the enemy role, the enemy health. Sorry. OK, and the enemy health is going to be the current enemy health. OK, the current enemy health minus whatever we've rolled. So it will be the player roll. OK, so we take the enemy health minus what we rolled and then we resave it again as the enemy health, which is brilliant. OK, next scenario is if unfortunately we lose, okay? So it's another if, if enemy roll is sort of the reverse of what we're doing. We did previously, if enemy roll is greater than player roll, okay? Player roll, uh, colon, then we unfortunately have to inform the player that you lost the round, okay? You lost the round. OK, and what happens when we've lost the round? Well, our player health needs to get updated, doesn't it? Player health equals whatever we currently had for player health minus the role of the enemy. OK, so again, <clears throat> we take what we're, our current health, we then minus what the enemy rolled, and then we resave it again as player health and continue on our way. And this is going to keep um, rolling and repeating until enemy health or player health isn't greater than zero anymore. So when one of us reaches um, a health value of zero or below. But it'd be nice after every round just to print off a little summary, just to, just to confirm back to the player the current state of uh, the current state of play with the, with, with the current fight. So I'm just going to add a couple of prints in there. Uh, your current health is, okay, plus, and then we're going to go with uh, player health, okay, player health. And I'm going to print off another one as well, just to say, uh, your oppo sorry, opponent's health is plus enemy health. There we go. So we're just printing. It's always good to feed back to the player what's happening, just so you know we know what's going on behind the scenes, but the player won't if nothing's on screen to tell them what's what's happening. You'll notice that I'm using this, str. So this is string conversion. So 
when we use print, we can only print one data type out at a time. So this sentence here is a string characters as you were as um, as as you're seeing on screen now. The player health stores an integer, which is a number. So we're trying to join a number onto a a string or a list of characters. It won't have it. Python doesn't like that. So I'm temp temporarily converting my number variable to a string, just so we can successfully join it to the rest of the sentence. OK, so let's see how that plays out at the minute. So if I run, OK, I'm going to play as the wizard again. I'm going to go left, save path. Let's try again. Oh, we've got an error. Now, errors are, are a good thing. Errors are a good thing. Um, they look scarier than they actually are. Um, and you really only need to pay attention to the last line of the error. In this case, I've got something called play health is not defined. So whenever you see the word not defined, it usually means in my case, a spelling mistake <laughs> in a variable or something. So I think I've spelt a variable wrong and it's pointing me towards something called play health. Now I know I don't have a variable called play health. I know I have one called player health, so it looks like I've spelt a variable wrong. And if I look through my code, I can see exactly where I've gone wrong and I've corrected it. So let's rerun it and try and go down the unsafe path again. Okay, so we're gonna play again, left, uh, safe path, there we go. Okay, so you can see the fight, how the fight's panning out. Um, I won that one, uh, I lost that one, and so on and so forth. But it happened really quick, didn't it? So it'd be nice to put in some breaks. So we'll get the player to press enter every time they, they play, a, play a round in the, in the fight. And to add in a pause just like that, we first need to locate where we're going to insert it. So after each round, and you've summarized the, um, the player's health and the enemy's health after each round, we're going to insert a pause, OK? And I'm going to create a variable called pause, use something called input. So input allows us to enter, uh, allows the player to enter something. We've previously used input further up in our program when the player enters a left or right choice or when they're choosing their characters to start with. So in this case, I'm just going to present a prompt that says press enter to continue the fight. OK. And what I also like to do is I also like to include print like a blank line. So it sort of breaks up, sort of breaks up the output and makes it easy to read, as, as we'll see in a, in, a, in a minute. So if I hit run, click OK. OK, and go to enter two and left. Safe path again, unsafe path. OK, you are to fight an ogre. You lost the round. Your current health is 61. Your opponent's health is 50, and it's paused. And the nice thing about input, it will sit there until it gets that input. Nothing, nothing else will run until it gets an input from the user. So I'm to press Enter to continue the fight. OK, oh, you lost that round. Your current health is 47, and the opponent's health is 50. OK, and again, press enter to continue the fight. Notice because I've printed that extra line spacing there, it's broken up each round nicely. So it makes it easier to read as, 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 it, as the screen starting to fill up with, 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 the, with the details of the fight. Like I said, we keep fighting until either the player's health is zero or the enemy's health is zero. OK, so all this code will keep looping around until one of us dies, basically. When when one of us does die, the, the rest of the code will continue to run. OK, so uh, we can print something like uh, the battle is over. The battle is over. OK. And depending on the outcome is whether it's going to be game over for us or it allows us to continue um, on our way. Let's do the game over first. OK, so if 
um, player health, okay, is less than one. So what that will mean is if player, if the player's health after the battle, if the player's health is less than one, so it's either going to be zero or negative, okay, print, we could just simply put game over. Okay, game over. Print game over. <laughs> and um, what, we, what we can then do is exit, open and close brackets. And what that'll do, that'll just stop the program outright. Okay, so as soon as you lose your battle and your health is fully depleted, the game, the program literally stops. And you have to restart the program in order to restart the game. Okay. If, uh, let's just say, if uh, uh, player health um, is greater than zero, okay, so we've come out of the battle with, 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 with health, with still some health points, okay, again, let's notify the player what's happened. You have survived the fight, okay, and continue on your way, okay? Notice that we're at the bottom now, we're at the bottom of our program, okay? And what this means is that when it reaches the bottom, what it will do, it will loop all the way back round, okay? Up to the top of the wild true loop and generate another location for us. But the nice thing is, it'll allow us to continue um, with the remaining health we have. So it won't reset the health back to 100 and send us on our way. If we come out the battle with, with 20 health points remaining, that's how much we continue playing the game with. So it makes the game, you know, slightly more challenging and more interesting. And as we start to think about how we can buy upgrades and things to help us along our way, you know, it, 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 it allows us to make important decisions such as do we do we buy the armor to help us in in a in a fight or do we do we invest in some health potion to 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 increase our health points so there's lots of lots of little decisions that we could make throughout the game that will that will govern the direction or, or how things behave okay you survive the fight and continue on your way in the next class, we'll be looking at how we can go to a shop and buy things that will help us increase our chances of winning the battle. But we won't be able to buy anything unless we have the money to do it. So why don't we quickly just create something now that allows us to record and add to uh, the amount of money that we collect throughout the game and store in our pocket. So at the very, very top, you can see here we've declared our player health variable. Okay, I'm going to put uh, a variable up here as well called money. And I'm going to start money with a big fat zero. So we start the game with no money at all. Okay, we might need to tweak this if we're testing certain things in our next lesson. So we might, I might just deliberately give myself like a hundred coins just just so i can test that our shop mechanism will work but in the actual game i'm going to start my players off with no money at all how do they get money well they get money by winning a fight okay and what we can do here we can add another print line so we can print um what could we say you have been rewarded uh um 10 gold coins, okay, 10 gold coins. And upon doing that, we need to update the money variable. So money equals money plus 10, okay? So we, we, we award ourselves uh, 10 gold coins, okay? And what we'll, what we'll do is at every location, we'll just print off a little summary, a little report of the current state of the player. So what their current health is and what how much money they've got in their pocket. OK, so and this is what we'll end on in this lesson. So find where we display where we um, 
we, we let the player know what location they've currently landed in. OK, just before they get to make the decision of going left or right. OK, let's print off the report here. So we could say print. Uh, you could say your health is. OK, oh, sorry, wrong way around. There we go. Notice I'm converting them to a string because it's an integer and we're, we're printing out only strings at this point. OK, so player health. OK. And what we'll do, we'll also print uh, uh, your money is, you, can, you could word this so much better than me. So your money is, and then we'll just print off how much money we've got currently. But like I said, if we start the game, um, we're, gonna, we're gonna start the game with zero, okay? So what we'll do is, we'll just add another line spacing because there's a lot of information there but we don't want them don't want it all cramped on screen so i'm going to print another line spacing like so okay let me uh let, let's run it and see what we get uh run okay again it's asking me to choose my character number two okay you move to your next your location you find yourself in a town OK, we've got a nice little report on how much health and money we have, and we're going to take the left path. Again, it's a safe path. OK, unsafe path. OK, you are to fight an ogre. You've won the round. OK, and we keep going until, can you see our health points? OK, so we won because the opponent's health dipped below zero, and it broke that loop. OK, and as you can see, the battle is over. You have survived the fight and continue on the way. You have been awarded 10 gold coins. So now when we go to the next location, can you see not only do we find ourselves in a new uh, location in the game, in this case, a street, our current health is 47 now. So we're continuing the game with what, what, what health points we survived, we came out that battle with, but we've also got our money. And in the next lesson, we'll be looking at how we can spend that money and increase our chances of winning any future fights in the game. OK, we'll leave it there. Good luck on your adventure. And uh, we'll continue coding this game in our next lesson. Take care and goodbye.